Is this the week the Bruins finally figure out the West Coast offense? Or at least show that they understand it a little bit. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Locked On UCLA Podcast. I'm your host, Zach anderson Yoxheimer. Thanks for making this show your first listen each and every day. It's your team every day. And thanks for downloading, subscribing. Thanks for your support. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. From now until September 22nd, you're running out of time. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Where we get started today is, can this be the week after a full off season, some spring practice, four weeks into the season, this being the Bruins' third game, can they show that they've made some strides in offense, right? As woeful as it's been the first couple of weeks, one touchdown in week one, one touchdown in week three, this has to be the week, right? How long can they take with the fairly veteran group to understand the Eric Bieniemy offense, right? They've had the struggles. It's been noted how they've struggled to understand the verbiage. Apparently, as I was reading the LA Times article written beautifully by Ben Bolch about Eric Bieniemy, the Bruins are still studying before the Indiana game about how to understand the offense and the terminology of it. So that's where they were as of last week through a bye week. If we're wondering why it's taken so long for the Bruins to look halfway decent, they still haven't grasped the offense. So can they show they've made at least not a leap and a bound, but baby steps, right? What I'm wanting for this team is small victories, small steps forward that can build into something, right? Regardless of how defeated they looked after the game, how injured they are after the Indiana game, UCLA still has quite a few pieces that last year they still moved the ball in offense. They might have not been the best offense in the world, but they still moved the ball and they could score more than 16 points a game where UCLA has one of the worst total offenses in the country and the only teams behind them have maybe one FBS win combined when it comes to looking at overall total offense. So for the Bruins, time is slowly turning into a third of the season gone in the regular season for them to have understood this offense. Eric Bienby only has a two-year contract. He gets another half million dollar bonus if you look at his contract. If he's on staff for next season past July of 25. So, and this is a tough offense to really grasp in one year. And this is with a redshirt senior quarterback with super COVID seniors or veteran running backs, experienced offensive linemen, and receivers who have been around at least two to three years, if not four, in the college game. So what we need is for UCLA to look more like the drive they had at the end of the first half where they went 78 yards. They compiled a first down after a first down and was able to turn it into a touchdown. And quite frankly, they almost did the same thing to start the second half against Indiana. It just stalled in the red zone where UCLA has had struggles even dating back to last year's Chip Kelly team when scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Now, if UCLA wants to pull off a monumental upset, they're going to have to be very good. If they want to get even any better this year and prove they can pull off just more than two wins this year, it comes down to a much better completion percentage from Ethan Garbers, who's just completing over 50% of his passes. A TJ Harden, who has, what, 28 yards a game? Something ridiculous between two games? That's not going to cut it for a guy who was one of the two leading backs last year, and the other ones in the NFL, and TJ Harden should be destined for the NFL unless his numbers are so poor that nobody takes a look at him after this year. Okay, what can UCLA do to find ways to be successful? Simplify, simplify, simplify. Logan Loya, last year's leading receiver, who is not technically at the start of the year listed as a top two on the depth chart at his position in the slot, has one catch through two games. Rico Flores had a big game and a big bomb against Hawaii, then was unheard of the next game. Of course, Indiana probably keyed on him. J. Michael Sturdivant didn't have a single catch. Yes, he took a big hit late in the game against Indiana, but didn't have a single reception. How is UCLA going through these games? Yes, Garbers is not getting protected. Sometimes these guys aren't open, but there has to be a better way to get all of these guys involved much earlier. Like getting touches and targets 
in the first and second quarter for this game. And regardless of how complicated this West Coast offense is, right, even the commanders under Eric Bieniemy's tutelage with then-head coach Ron Rivera, they started, what, 2-0 last year? And then the struggles continued when a lot of emphasis on the passing game, limited emphasis on the run game. And we see a similar setup here at a more extreme notion, right? You look at this team and they can't pass the ball successfully. It's taking Garbers a little bit to make the right decisions. And uh, he's not an NFL quarterback. This is an NFL style offense that even an NFL quarterback wasn't fully grasping with a limited offensive line in the NFC East last year. So there's no fault on Garbers for completely not being up to speed by the time week four is up to where we're at week four. But it's concerning when they have talent all around him and they should not be only scoring one touchdown a game in the first two weeks of the season, let alone against Hawaii. They were closing in on a couple of scores against Indiana, couldn't punch it in. And this week they have an opportunity. They have an absolute opportunity against an LSU defense that's a little porous on giving up big plays where they are gashed against South Carolina. They gave up 21 points to Nichols. And LSU did give up quite a few points to a USC offense that is now considered one of the country's hottest and nation's best. And they're coming off one of their worst defenses in school history that they had to make a defensive coordinator change. Not because he got hired somewhere else, because Brian Kelly had to do something different. So let's go over some keys to what UCLA can do to be successful on offense and prove they're learning something next on Locked on UCLA. All right, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and you probably know that it's a big line as UCLA are huge underdogs, more than three scores against LSU, I believe, plus 24 at the moment. But FanDuel is something a little bit different for you right now. From now until September 22nd, which means you're running out of time, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you, have to, all you have to get is a Google account. Make sure you have one of those, a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. Hey, UCLA fans. Have you heard about Roy? What does it stand for? Well, it stands for Return on You. It's a new platform that lets you, the fans, get involved in NIL like never before by making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. By supporting players directly, you can help shape rosters, retain talent, and keep your favorite athletes out of the transfer portal. As you all know, NIL has changed the game for athletes. Roy changes the NIL game for fans. There's no risk contributions because for fans' contributions, they are securely held and are only distributed if the athlete makes a decision that aligns with the fans' support. If not, the money is returned to the fan. And that's how you can engage with athletes on their NIL journey because using Roy, fans not only support athletes financially, but become a part of their name, image, and likeness journey, helping them succeed both in on and off the field. Download Roy on iOS or Android, enter the referral code Locked On, and you'll be automatically entered into the sweepstakes for $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for more details and no purchases necessary, void where prohibited. Again, get the Roy app. For iOS or Android, make the impact for your favorite team. Use the code Locked On for an opportunity with five thousand dollars cash. Visit joinroy.com for more details. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. All right, all right, all right. So what UCLA has really struggled with so far, as we've seen the first two weeks, is to protect the quarterback. I think LSU this year, they're a little bit better at getting to the quarterback. They can make a couple more plays than they did in 23. But this all starts for UCLA. This all starts with the offensive line consistently winning battles more often than they've been in the first couple of weeks. Keeping Ethan Garbers upright, regardless of what you thought about the targeting penalties or the roughing the pasture penalties, all that meant was Indiana and the week – the game before, Hawaii, they continued to get in the backfield and rough up Garbers. And Garbers can only withstand so much. He got beat up last year. 
and had to come out a couple of games because he was not 100%. So if he's going to stay back there, one of the keys for many UCLA pundits, including myself before the year, was to keep Garbers upright in going to this game. This is still the big problem. Can the Bruins not let the pass rush or anybody get a finger on Garbers more than they've been? Can they get a little bit better in this game against LSU? Because if, if UCLA is unable to pass protect, let alone run the game, we're, we're going to talk about the running game in its own. The pass protection has to be so much better. And is it at this point just a unit that can't get it? Is it communication based on a new system? There's a lot of questions that are for this offensive line. Back-to-back -back years, after you had a bunch of NFLers the year before, a very stout offensive line in 21, now, in 23 and 24, with quite a few characters, Josh Carlin moving from right guard to center, UCLA's moved a couple of pieces around, plugged one in from the portal, but quite a few guys played alongside each other last year. One would hope that they begin to show signs of improvement, or at least understanding what their weaknesses are, so they can work around that here in 24. That's easier said than done, because the Bruins haven't proved that yet. But... For any success in this game against LSU, which I think UCLA should be able to move the ball a little bit more than they have, which has been minimal, and dropping the ball and looking semi-foolish at times in the first halves of games, you got to protect your quarterback. If you don't, it's going to be a long day at the office, and Death Valley is going to mean something to Ethan Garbers when he's pummeled to the turf again and again and again with the Tiger defense and Hundreds of thousands of screaming fans at Death Valley in Baton Rouge. Now, what UCLA also needs is to establish a running game. That is against the, every grain of the offense that Eric Bieniemy's called, whether it's at, in Washington when it showed the first two weeks, an offense that last year predicated itself primarily on the run and then passed second. UCLA's flipped that and not sure they have the quarterback talent and the offensive line talent to rely a, so much on throwing the ball 30 to 40 times in a game where they want to win. Now, they're not going to run it more than 50% of the time. When they ran it more than 50% of the time with Chip Kelly, UCLA almost always won the game. Almost always. Other than like Oregon State, because they literally couldn't throw the ball. Or when they played Arizona State and they were down to their third string quarterback, UCLA in recent years, and some of, with, with what this team has built with fullbacks, running backs, Guys who can block up front, they were decent at blocking for the run last year. A team that rushed for 200 yards a game, just about in 23. UCLA has to do much better, and they did much better against Indiana in week three. Now let's see them crack the 100-yard plateau, and that's not even that much in college football for a team that has pieces that's proven they can do much better than what they've shown. It's a very different offense different emphasis, UCLA has to get back to basics and play complementary football. To set up a play-action pass, you have to have some success running the football. And no, we're not just talking about screen plays where UCLA dumps it off to Harden or Keegan Jones or wants to find a Maliki Matavao as a tight end cruising up the seam on some funky-looking screen play. UCLA's got to get back to basics and do that. And then number three Hit your weapons, all right? Whether J. Michael is healthy, I know he hasn't necessarily been a guy that was, I think, ruled out of practice. I haven't read that just yet, but you've got J. Michael, you've got Rico Flores, you've got Logan Loya. I know Flores and Rico have been battling for a spot. Maliki Matsuvao is a big piece, but I want to see one of those three big receivers. Whoever's healthy, I know you've had Titus Monkey out. It's Malala banged up a little bit too. So whoever's healthy... Let's see a big game. We saw that in week one and saw a big play completely turn the tide in an eventual UCLA victory. And while that might not necessarily be the case this weekend, if the Bruins are going to feast and it's a buffet, then we should be some seeing somebody different every week, like blow up. We should be somebody see somebody expand their NFL draft stock because this is supposed to be an offense that helps do that, especially in the receiver room if they've got so much so-called talent. And I don't doubt that. But this one of these guys has to go out, have a big game, make a big play, and get over 100 yards receiving. One of these guys. I, I don't even care who it is. I'm not even sure who it could be based on the matchups, whoever burns their DB. It all depends on what LSU does. 
what UCLA needs is a DB, is a, is a receiver to go out and just burn some of these LSU players deep or maybe in the slot, whatever it takes for victory. Now, we're going to talk and see what is LSU bad at this year. Not exactly the same as the 24 defense, but we'll talk more about it next on Locked on UCLA. Go get your UCLA tickets with game time. Maybe you're looking for a comedy event. Could be UCLA. Maybe you're looking for a theatrical event. Maybe it's UCLA. You want to go cheer on these Bruins football, eventually the basketball season. Go to game time. Because what does game time got? They've got game time picks. It's a new feature you can use that curates to make it easier to save more on sports, concerts, theater events, and check it out without just going through thousands of tickets for plenty of events. They've also got game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Yeah, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account, use the code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All righty, cruising into that last segment here for Locked On UCLA. What are some of the weaknesses the Bruins can exploit for this LSU defense? I'm reading an on three article about what LSU has struggled with this year, right? They're two and one. They are very lucky to get away with the win, come away with the win at South Carolina. Some say, all right, some calls one way. It was a high scoring affair, and it took LSU to the very end of the game to come away with victory. Otherwise, this could be a game between two teams that are 500 and worse, and UCLA would be the team that's at 500, all right? Now, I do think LSU should have beaten USC earlier this year. Whatever. This is where we're at. So what LSU so far, as you look at the numbers, UCLA is a team in the 120s just about with scoring offense. LSU, while their number's a little bit better in total defense, they're ranked through three weeks 91st in total defense. 94th in scoring defense, and they have aspirations to contend for the SEC, be at the fringe of a CFP berth. They haven't really proven that just yet. Now, it's a team that was dreadful last year defensively because they had the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in Jane Daniels, who is now the starter out in Washington, where Eric Bieniemy just left as Sam Howell lost his job. Now you got the likes of the Tigers who have been giving up big plays. They almost gave up 400 yards of offense to South Carolina. There are big plays, like a 75-yard touchdown run for South Carolina's quarterback, Lenore Sellers. So if there's ever a hope for an Ethan Garber's running play, broken down play that turns into a touchdown, maybe you get one of those if UCLA wants to get a broken down play. So what UCLA needs is a chunk of big plays, which they haven't exactly done, but they might be able to do against LSU, all right? The the problem is, kind of looking into this LSU article on On3, is they've been giving up too many big plays. Too many big plays for this Tiger defense because they're trying to do things, right? So reading what the article says, everybody on the defensive staff was fired from a year ago. So everybody on this defensive staff is working through the first few games of the defense that's by and large the same defense they had a year ago. There's not a bunch of new pieces out there you got to work with. I think that was a quote used by Shea Dixon of the Bengal Tiger in an on three roundtable discussion. Now you look at the UCLA offense, who they didn't clear house. They've got a talented core of sorts, maybe with some better receivers added in, healthy and from the portal from a year ago, running backs who can do things, the offensive line with their problems but still strengths, but they have a new coordinator. So which worst thing is going to show up in this one, right? Can UCLA get some points against an atrocious defense that's trying to get better? Or can UCLA, in a weird way, regress to the norm, simplify their offense, and go back to a team that, while their offense was the worst part of the team last year, other than special teams kicking field goals, defense was by and far the leader in the clubhouse for this 23 team last year, 
For the 24 team, the offense has been bottom of the country bad. And they have much better talent than what they've shown statistically through the first couple of games. Now that LSU is growing, they also have, you can see the difference in coaching. UCLA goes from kind of mediocre upper echelon offensive team plummeting down. LSU, one of the worst defensive teams they've ever had, slowly climbing, but that's not going to make them a consistent top 25 team unless Nussmeyer is throwing for 400 yards or something ridiculous, right? Trying to battle against 400, 500 yards of offense a game. This is an opportunity for UCLA to gash them with big plays. Okay? This is what UCLA has to deal with. Because LSU, reading this on through article again, two deficient spots for them right now. D-line, but they are a little bit better potentially at DB. This is a chance for the Bruins to exploit LSU while they're still getting better. This could be a team that's much better. They've shown some weaknesses, and they've probably gone back to the film to try and fix what they missed against the Gamecocks in that game on the road last week. But I'm not sure they're going to fix everything. And UCLA has shown some signs that they might actually score two touchdowns in a game. I think, I'm going to go out on the limb here, go out on the limb, UCLA is going to score two offensive touchdowns in this game. They need to, just for a small victory, a small step forward, to make sure this team is progressing from week to week. Whether you're getting the wins or not, you got to show you're getting better if you're Eric Bieniemy to retain your offensive coordinator job. If you're Deshaun Foster to make sure you're not one and done. If you're all these players, if you want to get NFL draft looks, if you want to get CFL looks, UFL looks, you want to get different opportunities, maybe a better coaching job, you want to showcase your understanding of high-level offense. And if they simplify it, get down to the, the basics, the bare minimum of running the ball, a play-action pass that works twice in this game for a couple of big plays, then I'm going to go on the limb and say this UCLA team can go out and score two offensive touchdowns, have two big plays over 30 yards, like they will have this, I hope, and not look like the worst team that's ever graced the field in a UCLA uniform. I don't think that's the case. But that's how downtrodden the spirits are right now. Maybe in the locker room, outside the locker room, whatever podcast platform you're listening to, that just it seems like we're all going there at the moment. And I'm going to try and turn the page and hope for UCLA does not do that continually throughout the year. They do not look like a good ball club, but they can still make some plays and grow to prove they can compete in the next couple of weeks where they still got Oregon. They still have Penn State on the schedule with a winnable game potentially at home against Minnesota. I'm not sure. And then a lot of games they are not going to be favored at home or on the road all the way down to the end of November. So this is a chance for UCLA to get some big time plays. All right. So get your hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. I'm here live in New Orleans. We're going to Baton Rouge. We're going to see this live. I will recap it, I believe, for this day, and we'll figure it out how it goes. But until then, we'll have lots of fun with the, another preview, more content, and then a live reaction after the game. So stay tuned for that. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, C, uh, late. You, C, L, A, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Download, subscribe, support. Thanks for your support. It's been Locked On UCLA. Zach signing off. Go Bruins.